Welcome, fellow mech warriors. I'm Adam, and this is a solo episode of The Memory Core. Having been a fan of Battletech for 28 years, one of the many things that has vexed me is how the Atlas acquired missile ports on both sides of the torso. The Atlas is among the most recognizable and iconic mechs in Battletech, probably only second to the Timberwolf. Its imagery hits that sweet spot of imposing without being over the top. The use of the skull-shaped head in particular straddles a line between awesome and ridiculous, but stays on the correct side of that line. Originally, the Atlas was fluffed as not being able to fit a full 20 tubes for its LRM-20 in the chest. Rather, a rapid-firing set of five tubes sat on the left hip. Up in the chest was the SRM-6, yet sometime between its initial appearance in 1986 as the AS-7D in TRO-3025 by Dwayne Luce and as the AS-7K in 1990's TRO-3050 by Joel Bisk, it acquired the split LRM-20. Although with construction rules, the Atlas could fit an LRM-10 in both torsos, no variant at the time showed those stats. It seemed a weird depiction. Even more so since the K dropped the SRM entirely, and for some reason has the gauze ammo in the right arm. In the four years between TRO 3025 and 3050, the few depictions in the art were consistent. SRM 6 high in the torso, and LRM 20 at the hip. After TRO 3050, the Atlas's profile rose. It was increasingly shown in art, and the split LRM became dominant. This was reinforced in TRO 3050 upgrade, with new drawings by Brent Evans, updated fluff, as well as in numerous miniatures. In some instances, there were attempts at correction, such as those by the German artist Franz Vowinkel, who did a number of excellent pieces. When Ironwind Metals released an atlas for the beginner lance sets, a modification of the third atlas sculpt was created. In the case of the late 90s CCG, the compromise seemed to be to depict the 7D as it was originally, but the 7K with the split launchers. So, what happened? In this case, I believe it is a fact of the miniature impacting the direction of the art. This is the original atlas sculpted by Tom Meyer. The date stamp on the bottom states 86, and it first appeared in the 1987 Ralph Partha catalog. For those who are not aware, Tom is a legend. He was among the founders of Ralph Partha, was the first to sculpt with green epoxy, and has been active for about four decades. Currently, he's working extensively with Dark Sword Miniatures and Ralph Partha Legacy to produce some truly fantastic fantasy sculpts. My hypothesis is that after the release of TRO 3025, Ralph Partha and Fossa sent out to produce sculpts as quickly as they could. Tom was assigned the Atlas, given the art and the stats, but not the fluff. He likely thought that the art may have been made in error, but also realized that there wasn't the space and the scale to include 20 missile ports in the chest, exactly as the fluff had stated. Given time constraints and a pile of sculpts to get done, he figured he would split the LRM between the side torsos and just get on with it. After all, it isn't as though Fossa hadn't already made a goof or two. The Ostrock, for example, with its appearance in TRO 325, the Mini in the 88 Partha Catalog, and in TRO 3050, not to mention the numerous misprints mixing up the Oscout, Ossol, and Ostrock entries in TRO 325. Other examples include the Orion's fluff and placement of the SRM in the arm versus the torso, and the position of the LRM launcher in the Thunderbolt. This interpretation of the Atlas with the split LRM launcher would be reinforced by the Plastec box release in 1988, and this version would be affectionately referred to as the Fatless. When TRO 3050 was being planned and drawn, Fossa likely relied on the miniatures for visual continuity. From there, it stuck, despite attempts at course correction in order to match the original lore. Even as recent as the unreleased Shadows of Faith novel was the Atlas featured with the split LRM launcher. Only recently, with the line-wide redesign and the release of new miniatures, has a return to the original concept of TRO-325 seemed to have stuck. And that, fellow mech warriors, may just be the story of how the Atlas came to have a split LRM-20.